Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Um, this is probably gonna be quite basic, but I thought maybe some of my subscribers might profit from some advanced key uh, functions, some keyboard shortcuts, and this is why I'm making this video. I'm just gonna go over the keyboard shortcuts I use on a regular basis, and um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, um, the first keyboard shortcut I'll show you is probably copy and paste, and you all probably know that, but if I have a group here and I click it with the arrow tool, and I hit Command C or Control C on a Windows machine, I can copy and paste the group just like I can with um, with text in the OS, for example. I can also copy and paste devices, but that's impossible via the command menu. You can only duplicate devices via a keyboard shortcut. That's um, Control D or Command D. So yeah, but we don't need um, five those. So that's why I'm gonna undo with Control Y um, or Control Z on a German keyboard. But yeah, that's the basics. Let's get to the reason specific ones. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna touch on the Q, W, E, R, T, and Y options. Um, as you can see, as I hit these buttons, Q, W, E, R, T, uh, Y, and the hand tool is U. Yeah, it's it's just the upper the 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 most um, the the highest row of the keyboard. Um, it allows you to quickly cycle through um, your tools up here. So when I work with Reason, I always have my left hand on these buttons or on the left side of the keyboard. And when I work with Reason, like usually when I have a project open and I know I'm going to be creating another instrument, I'll just right click create instruments. Then I'll I'll hit W, draw in a little group, double click that, and um, I'm just going to make that. Uh, I'm just gonna repeat that action just a bit shorter. So right click, create instrument, and then I create the instrument, hit W so that the pen tool is selected, draw in the group, hit Q again, double click, hit W again or to open the pen tool, draw a note in, hit Q again to reselect the arrow tool, and there you have the group. And now, um, I don't wanna show off here, but I'm just gonna do it real quickly, so. Create instrument, hit W, create a group, hit Q, draw in a note. And that's how fast you can make a group uh, with keyboard shortcuts, that's really nice. Also, when you're working in the arrangement window, you might want to split something, so I'll just hit R, use the razor tool, split that, hit Q again, and then I can move them around. Um, especially these keyboard shortcuts on the very um, left top hand corner of the keyboard are very, very useful. Um, then of course the spacebar. Spacebar is play and pause at the same time. Doesn't need much explaining. Um, what else do we have? We have the um, F5, F6, and F7 keys in Reason 6 or Record. Um, the F5 key brings up the mixer. The F6 key brings up the sequ uh, the rack view, and the F7 key brings up the sequencer. If you press any of these keys um, simultaneously. Um, they will bring up the corresponding sections simultaneously. So for example, if I wanted to take a look at the mixer and the rack, because I want to do some synth tweaking, I would hit F5 and F6 at the same time, and bam, there I have my mixer and the rack, and then I can adjust them a little bit, and there we go. Um, furthermore, the numeric pad, the numeric keypad, um, is very, very useful. The zero key, when I'm playing, like I'm, pl I'm playing back this song, and of course it has nothing in it, but as I hit the zero key, it stops the song. If I hit it again, it will return to the section I played from last, and if I hit it again, it will revert to the beginning of the song. Now I'm gonna start playing from bar 25 and show you again. So the song is playing. I hit the zero key, it stops. I hit it again, it reverts to bar 25. I hit it again, it reverts to the start of the song. Now, if you want to revert to the start of the song instantly, you can also hit the comma key on the numerical keypad, which will transport the um, transport marker back to the start of the song. And you can do that as many times if you want, as you want. Actually, let me zoom in on this thing a little bit. So I can hit this as often as I want. The song will keep playing and it just start all over again. Um, now let's talk about loop locators. Um, on the numerical keypad, the numbers one and two will make your marker, your playhead, jump to the left lo loop locator or to the right loop lo locator. Number one jumps to the left one, number two jumps to the right one. This is really useful because, for example, let's say you wanted to work on this loop 
and um, this loop is eight bars long. I hope these are, yeah, these are eight bars. And the song is playing. And then suddenly you realize, oh damn, my loop isn't on. And then you activate the loop using the slash key on the numerical keypad, by the way. So now the loop is on. And then you want to quickly jump back. And instead of dragging this and interrupting your song, you can just hit the one key and it will immediately start from the loop. I found that this makes a really nice addition to the workflow because it doesn't interrupt your music as much. Also, if you if you are in a loop and you want to keep the loop activated, but just want to jump to the end and have the song play on, you can just hit the two button, it will jump to the end and keep continuing playing from there. Sorry. Um, let's continue with the numerical keypad. And then number three on the numerical keypad creates a so-called overdub, which means that if I have a note lane uh, selected, a MIDI lane, sorry, a MIDI lane, and I hit the three button, there is another lane. Another lane comes up and it's not muted. So that means you can put another layer on top. I use this a lot of the time for hi-hats, for example, if I want to layer several um, lanes of hi-hats and don't want to enter the groups to edit them individually. Um, this is a very useful um, button. The number six button just above it does the same thing, but um, it creates what's called um, what's called an alternate take. So, for example, if I have a group here and I hit the three button, nothing happens to the group. But if I ha hit the six button, everything on that lane is muted, and I can now record another take. Um, these buttons also correspond to these buttons down here that you can click dub or alt. This is basically what I explained before. Um, the seven and eight buttons allow you to jump forwards and backwards by one bar. And this functionality is also there as long as you play back the song. So the song is playing and I hit the seven button, it will jump back by one bar. Hit it again, it will jump back by another bar. And you can jump really far with that as long as you hit the buttons. Um, the buttons four and five just below that um, do almost the same thing, except they have the same effect as if you click this fast forward or fast backward button, this rewind button. Um, they are a bit different in how they behave, but I can't really explain how, it's really weird and you're just gonna have to um, experiment with that. Um, other than that, um, the star button, or the asterisk, I believe it's called in English, again, English is my uh, first language, um, records, starts a recording, so basically you just um, press the asterisk and it has the same effect as if you were hitting the record button. Um, very simple, nothing special. And uh, then there's two more important um, features that I find really, really interesting. And um, that's snap. So if you just hit the S key, the snap up here on the um, upper left hand corner of the screen will start activating and deactivating. And this is really useful if you're working with audio samples. And then also um, there's the click button, which is C, which allows you to turn your click on and off. So those are all the buttons or the key combinations I can think of right now. Um, another, uh, there, there's a couple of other ones, for example, Command I, which will create a new instrument, Command Alt I, which will create a, which will import an audio file, Command T, which will create an audio track. But um, yeah, those are all the important ones I can think about right now. And um, I will get into modifier keys now. So uh, let's assume you have a group of MIDI data. I'm just going to draw in some MIDI data right here. All right, so that's just a couple of notes. I don't really care. Um, it's not important anyway. So if you have the arrow tool selected, remember that was the Q button. Um, you can select the arrow tool and basically just move it around wherever you want, as long as it's on a MIDI lane. Now, if you want to copy that thing over, um, as Mac users probably know, you can just hold down the Alt button and it will create a copy instead. Now, uh, new in Reason 6 is the time stretch feature. And what not that many people know is that it doesn't only apply to um, audio data, which I will demonstrate in a second, but it also applies to MIDI data. So I can click this MIDI clip, hold down the Alt button and then drag these handles and it will stretch the MIDI clip out. And the interesting thing is that it doesn't um, 
make the group longer or shorter, but in time, but it time stretches the group. So that's really, really nice. For example, um, earlier when I was working on a project, I had a chord progression that was quite similar to this, actually. And I thought it was too fast. It was actually like this. Um, yeah, like this. And I was making some sort of dubstep track. And uh, by the way, please no hate. I like dubstep. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, I was able to just grab the end handle here, drag that out to double the tempo, and that way I didn't have to pull up the um, tool window. Oh, that's another um, important one, by the way, the tool window. Hit F8, and a tool window will pop up, where you can do adjustments like note uh, quantization, um, pitch adjustment, uh, note velocity, length, legato adjustments, tempo scaling... For example, um, what I just demonstrated, the time stretching, I would have done this, I, I did this in my project, but um, in earlier versions of Reason, I would have had to open the tool window and click uh, half or double. <coughs> and on some machines, the tool window can actually take some time to open for some reason. I guess it's because it's got to load up all these devices and regroove patches and samples and stuff. But um, yeah, um, that's pretty much all the key combinations I can think of right now. I hope it improved your workflow a little bit. And I've got more Seriously Six Sense sounds coming up in the next couple of days, hopefully. And uh, yeah, hope everybody's having a good time learning something from this. Please subscribe and like and favorite and that stuff. It really helps me out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Dorian Code out.